Hello everyone, welcome to Smart Investing. Today is Sunday, October 30th. It is 8.55 p.m. on the East Coast in the U.S. And today's video is going to be about the special dividends for the month. So, as I said in my previous video, I have one video... Uh, and this is the second, so I do two videos in a month. So every two weeks, uh, I do the special dividends. And this is for the month of October. And I'm glad, you know, October 31st actually ends tomorrow. And today's the 30th, so it's the close, closest to the end of the month. So I thought I'd do the video anyway. So... Again, uh, I think I'm going to have two videos in November, so stay tuned for that. So also, before we begin, uh, this is going to be a long video. I apologize, there's so many stocks here, um, but there's just so much to say. So let, let's begin, and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. So first things first, uh... This is the list that I have. I have about, uh, I don't know, I'd say 20 stocks maybe, 15 to 20, um, more or less. So we're going to start from the bottom all the way to the top. The first company that I have, Albertsons and Albertsons Companies, ACI. So my name is Albert, first of all. And again, um, very interesting uh, with this company. So basically, ACI, Albertsons Companies, they're like a food retailer. So basically, they're like a supermarket. Uh, they're not on the East Coast. I think they're somewhere either Midwest or West or maybe Central. Who knows? But anyhow, U.S.-based company. And I have major news for this company. So uh, for this company... Uh, this is the major news that I have. So, I don't know if uh, people are involved with this company. Like, I mean, as far as investors. So, what I want to say is... Uh, There's two kinds of Wall Streets. You have uh, Wall Street, which are the big institutions and the investors. But then you have the other side of Wall Street, which is intersected by Law Street. So funny thing is, uh, law is spelled wall backwards. So... The thing I like about Law Street is that you got to play by the rules. So apparently, Albertsons, they have been acquired by Kroger. So this is still in the works. I mean, apparently the merge uh, happened. But what Albertsons wanted to do, obviously they, they're passing on the debt, but as soon as... It was announced that Albertsons was going to be acquired. Right away, they wanted to announce special dividends. So uh, this is proof for you guys to see that uh, things can get out of hand and things can be delayed. So for this special dividend, as soon as they got acquired, uh, a lot of lawyers are in the mix of this. And they're saying, I don't know which end, I don't know if it's from the Albertson side or the Kroger side, but they're saying that they want to delay the special dividend payment. Reason being is because I think the dividend payment is about, uh, we can go over it, but they're paying up to $4 billion in shares for the special dividend payment. And as you can see here, 
Uh, I just want to cut this short. So nearly four billion to its shareholders for Albertsons, and then uh, the total value, the deal was uh, twenty, close to twenty four and a half billion through that joint process. So basically, out of the twenty five, four billion is being paid out to uh, investors for the special dividend. And then the funny thing is, the amount for the special dividend for the Albertsons shareholders, they want to pay out $6.85 per share. I don't know the price of Albertsons right now. We'll see that in a few minutes. So we're talking about out of $25 billion for this uh, total acquisition, $4 billion of it, which includes $6.85 per share, will be distributed on November 7th as a special dividend. So now uh, lawyers are saying that's more than two years of profits. So basically, you're giving away, uh, let's round it off to three years, because if it's more than two, we could say that's three years worth of profits, $4 billion. So with that said, they just want a big payout, and I don't blame them. So the funny thing is, by the time they get acquired, yes, it, it's it's confirmed that they're getting acquired, but there's a whole process to that. They have to sign paperwork and do whatever, get all these lawyers involved. So we're going to see how this plays out. So anyhow, uh, it says here on Law Street, so I'm using Law Street Media. So for this deal, it says the effort has seemed to miss the mark given the announcement and associated letter to Kroger and Albertsons. So basically, they want to, I guess this was like a third party, uh, which involved the attorney generals, and this involved Washington, D.C., so, aside from the lawyers from both sides, uh, Washington is stepping up into the mix and is trying to screw things up with this deal. And they're pretty much saying that um, you should hold off on the amount because aside from food prices going up, they might fluctuate. And then, aside from that, we... Well, the deal uh, is not fully processed, so they don't know when the deal is going to end. And then when that deal ends, uh, that's when we they can safely say that, okay, these are the prices of, for what food is, and then they can distribute the monies accordingly. So... It's just a delay, so, I mean, I think the attorney generals, they, they don't, like, they're trying to delay it, and it just makes things even worse. Uh, Albertsons just wants to do the payout. Kroger, I'm not sure if they want to do the payout. Um, We could read about it real quick, but uh, you see here the... The OAG argues that the special dividend risks significantly limiting the company's ability to operate properly and compete with Kroger, in which it would impact consumers, workers, and grocery markets oversight. So what they're trying to say is that uh, the attorney generals, they're more concerned for the company itself and supposedly workers and uh, getting profits and everything within that. And 
uh, trying to stay afloat with locations and all that. So basically the business itself as a standalone for Kroger, uh, they're not sure um, if, if, if they're getting a de good deal from Albertsons when they're finalizing the deal to acquire them. So Albertsons just wants to cash out and then sell it. So uh, personally me, I got to side with Albertsons. If they approved and wanted to merge and they they basically are not getting any rights before they even sell the company, I might as well pay out shareholders and, you know, give it a good name or give it some reputable uh, accountability because, um, to be honest, Albertsons is only been public on the market for two years and yes they've been paying dividends but uh they, they were a pretty good company that you know with their size they they're giving a huge percentage in the overall us uh, uh market for foods distribution that now they can pretty much compete with bigger competition and that would include like Dollar General. Um, I wouldn't say Walmart right now, but maybe the smaller chains, like um, what is it, uh, Whole Foods and stuff. When it comes to uh, Kroger competing on that level, so anyhow, the DAs and DC, everywhere from DC wants to get involved, and they hope that Albertsons won't proceed with the special dividend. It says while the merger is being assessed. So, attorney generals, they're against the special dividends. And they're against the merger as a whole. Kroger still likes the merger. But I doubt they want to have Albertsons pay this special dividend. So, it's all a money game. We're going to see who gets what. But I think I'll, I'm going to have to agree more with Albertsons because if they're the ones selling the company and they, you know, it, it's a two-way street. Um, they're giving them a big piece, not only of the company, of a big market share to play in for that sector. So if they're already profitable on top of Kroger being profitable, they might as well at least, you know... And on a good note is what I'm trying to say. So that, I think that's what Albertsons is trying to do. And on a good note. So um, that's all I have to say about this company. I do like Albertsons. Um, I, I, I've liked it since day one. I haven't really talked about it. I haven't gotten around to it. Because they were fairly new. And I haven't gone over that sector yet. So uh, I guess I'm a little bit too late. On that sector, but by the time I even get to it, this company won't exist because it will be on the Kroger and it will be acquired and merged under that name. So Albertsons, I didn't even, I, I can't even go over. So anyhow, I thought you guys might want to see that. And uh, I guess I want to cut this short and I wanted to show you that real quick. Uh, so I'm going to do actually a two part video since i've been talking too much anyway so for aci we're actually going to review this company right now and as we can see here they are twenty dollars and 38 cents so 10.9 billion dollar company close to 11 billion dollar company as you can see very profitable 2.82 very undervalued uh dividend of 48 cents so we have 52 week high and low, pretty decent, not too bad. Volume is very, very high. So this is a good play. It's a good stock. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not Walmart and it's not a big chain, but uh, they're trying to grow and, and do good things. So uh, it sucks to see there's less competition and just everybody wants to do the whole merge and, and you know, uh, with 
the way things are, instead of, um, you know, having people laid off, they just want to um, increase, you know, revenue and everything, increase the money supply. And uh, again, Albertsons is not getting any rights. They're not doing like a name change or anything. They get their, you know, Kroger's getting full recognition and rights. So anyhow, five-year chart, I just want to show this off. You see that uh, they've only been around since 2020 and they've been going up and they shot up around 2021 and they've held their composure so they gone up and down with these whipsaws but they stayed pretty much flat which ain't bad so they're not back to new lows so that's a good thing so they've been holding up on their own pretty good even for the last two years so as we can see here you see uh shares outstanding so those were the total shares and then these are the shares available as of right now 313 so as you can see that's about 200 million shares that were acquired uh, from investors overall institutions firms uh capital firms um all these kinds of investors involved so moving on to uh the company we'll go over some financials as you can see the earnings per share the actual results and the estimates you can see they have beaten their estimates which is pretty good and then their debt uh was getting pretty high but they were starting to lower it so we're going to look at the yearly and let's see that real quick so they were high at 93 and now they were going into the public market and as you can see they're starting to lower their debt so their margins were not too bad they were growing their margins so like i said they were leaving on a good note starting to uh do better overall even during this tough time because even this during this tough time uh, this is when margins were actually increasing. So funny thing is, uh, I think even if they acquire this deal or complete this deal at the end of next year or next any anytime next year, uh, they'll still be in a good position because uh, obviously increases in food overall uh, are giving them their 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 money's worth. So revenue is going to increase, net income, everything, uh, margins. Uh, it's just a really good company to look at. Uh, aside from them uh, being in debt, but you know they can make up for it now and do better with the debt payments because it's a popular sector. So cash flow, we're going to look at that. And they manage their cash flow accordingly. So they were cash flow positive at least one billion. So I think with that, I think that's why they said the, the special uh, dividends would have um, actually made them negative. So if they had a billion left over, we're gonna see their net income. So what two and a half billion? So two point six billion to be exact so they're actually down 1.4 billion if they wanted to uh pay out that six dollar and 85 cents a share uh special dividend so i mean there's there's just a lot of shares that are acquired that's what it is so there would be negative at least one point like i said over one billion negative so now we're gonna look at the dividends as you can see here it looks like they paid out that special dividend already in october october 21st so i don't know why they gave the news that um they should hold off on it but again uh these supposedly are the last payments and in 2022, they made 
uh, five payments. And if we can see here, this was only about 40 cents. But including the special dividend, that was at least, uh, you're looking at at least $7.25. So that is not a bad payout. So $7.25. Uh, let's do the math. So $7.25 into... Uh, twenty dollars and thirty-eight cents. So you're looking at a dividend yield or a dividend return of thirty-five point five. Well, thirty-five point six percent. So at least a thirty-five percent dividend yield if you would have had this stock. So 35% uh, dividend. Sorry, dividend yield, sorry, not the amount. So amount, the amount would have been at least a minimum, a minimum of, sorry my handwriting, a minimum of $7.25 per share if you held that stock the year before. So uh, I wanna end this video. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I'll do the rest of these companies, but I thought I'd show you major news. So thank you guys for watching. I'll do the next video coming up.